Yes, it's 110 years this year. Um, it has grown over the years. By the time I joined this school in senior one, in 1973, there were about 600 students and about 30 teachers. But, and this, the, the population in Uganda was, I think, 9 or 10 million. Now the population has grown to something like 37 million. Gaza cannot remain unaffected. As we moved around the facilities, as the new PTA, we came to this staff room. Wow. There were fewer teachers in the years when we were. Now there are 72 in number. I think that time there were around 35 because we were fewer. And these teachers had to all cram in that small staff room. As I talked to the old girls, they asked me, yes, Rebecca, you are a PTA chair person and an old girl at that. What should we do? I said, if we want performance of Gaza to continue, we need to ensure that the teacher is happy. So we took on the staff room project. At the beginning of the term, the, some OGs came around from GOGA, the committee from GOGA, and they expressed a need to upgrade our staff room. So they, they came and met us as a group, asked for our views, different people gave in their views. Then later, they requested that one of us compiles, and the deputy, Mr. Dung, requested me to compile the views. So I went back, got to the teachers, and they told me what they needed. You will see the reddish brown sun in turning the to which means that the copper is being oxidized. The teachers are increasing. They are great teachers, but as they increase, the space definitely is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and we wouldn't want it to affect how they teach us, because so far, they're doing a great job, but I'm sure if someone was in bad living conditions, they wouldn't perform the best work they could. And when we stay in the staff room as a family, we gel, we are able to work together, we are able to think together and so on. We, we build the rapport and teamwork is built. So the spillover really, some stay on the veranda, now it is cold and it has rained. So they find, they scatter all over. So most of the teachers find themselves sitting outside, um, sitting on the lawns and also, um, when the owner of a space comes in, assuming you've been sitting in somebody's space, you've got to move. Usually, we're encouraged to come and ask for help if we've not understood something in a lesson, if we have any question, even if it's not academic, uh, academically related, we can still come and talk to our teachers. But the time which we are given to meet our teachers is break time, lunch time, maybe in the evening after lessons. But this time, the teachers are there taking their tea. And since there are many, some of them are outside, and the doorway is small, so students, depending on our number, some are unable to access the door to send for the teacher, and even the door in its size, uh, it's only one teacher at a time who can come out, and so you're hurrying to send for one teacher, and then you forget that this person also sent for another teacher, so by the time the period is done, you've been unable to, uh, to meet the teacher you wanted to meet, and so you have to postpone it to another day. Some students have issues that cannot be addressed in the staff room, in the classroom, so they follow up the teachers to, for extra help and for counseling or mentoring, or just addressing some issues that might be affecting the students. If you have a bigger staff room, you probably can get a corner where you can sit with the student in the open. You know, this is a girls' school. Uh, one of the things, and, and we've got <clears throat> a good number of male students, male, male teachers. 
So you definitely have to give that space between um, the male teacher and the female student. A little supervision over them, indirect supervision. So if the male teacher could give a one-on-one -on -one to the student in the staff room, you know, with space in the staff room, there's artificial supervision over them as to what is happening. Not all the 72 can be here at a time. So some people, especially those who live around, if they have no lesson, instead of crowding there, they would prefer to go to their homes. Because people are, com are packed together like sardines, Everybody's, there is no space. There is no working space, there is no sitting space. So the way we are surviving is that somehow not all the 72 are around at the same time. In a good staff room, would be, we could have an impromptu staff meeting there where people can comfortably sit and we talk about issues. And, you know, the ambience ought to be good. It is so squashed. The tables are full of piles of papers. And when it comes to meal times, those are the very tables we use. So you find someone placing the, the cup on top of a pile of papers, which is at risk because any slight change, the, the tea could pour on the papers or books. The food and the books are in a mix. And at times, accidents happen where the sauce pours onto the books for another teacher, done by another teacher. So then that becomes a source of conflict. The toilets they have right now, they are only two, one for ladies, one for gents, then maybe the headmistress has her own. But then these two, we are serving over 100 staff, a combination of teaching staff and admin staff, which was unbelievable. So they, had, uh, they have two pit latrines outside, they have pit latrines, and then the internal two were overworked to the point where they actually stopped. I think they stopped flashing fully. Then I looked at the pigeon holes and the cabinets where they keep their lockers, where they keep information, books. They were too few and they were falling apart. And then just the mess, you know, the, the desks where they were working. This teacher's books are on top of another teacher's books because there's no, even the laptops are sitting on files and the whole place was unbelievable. I had a very interesting opportunity of uh, becoming a deputy headmistress with no office and my office was in the staff room. So I had a corner where I had to, to, to sit in the staff room in order to, to be deputy headmistress, which, which was very trying, very, very trying because of, you know, what I really felt, um, being in charge and not in charge. Everything I had to do, I would have to go to the headmistress's office. And she's sitting there. I mean, there's hardly any, there was hardly any privacy. <laughs> I feel that we need to maintain that close relationship between the teacher and the student beyond the classroom because that's what makes Gayaza unique. The teachers are able to guide the students, they are able to know the students, not just their academic potential but they get to know the student holistically. The teachers give a lot to us. So a lot is expected of us, not just in Uganda as a whole, but even the school would expect, you know, something. So in a sense, it's an honor, it's a privilege to be able to serve, to give back.
we are happy to see that the old girls are coming up with an initiative of building a bigger staff room. And we hope in the new staff room we can have personalized lockers, personalized spaces, but also a bigger space. They are not beginning something new. They, they have looped in the current structure of the staff room, but the ambience has been enriched. People will gel nicely because they are comfortably seated and they can communicate with each other and the movement in and out of the staff room is good. The staff are going to have a nursery room where they can breastfeed and the ones who are nursing and have babies taken care of by a nanny there. And then they are going to have a lounge where they'll be able to relax, watch some TV when they are off or eat their meals and have their discussions or meetings while the staff room itself is reserved for work. So it will have workstations. Every teacher will be able to have their laptop, a place to keep the laptop and a bag, a place to keep their files and papers without them being disturbed by anyone because it will be a personal working space. And then basically the working environment will be, the ambience will be beautiful. This is but one of the many projects that we want to see taking place in Gayaza because we want to remain the caliber that we have been known to be and we want to see more young girls, generations coming on board living the same kind of mannerisms. So we still want to do a better dining hall. 600 vis-a-vis -vis 1,160 is different. So this is the start and then we shall go on. And by that we are making an appeal to all well-wishers in the diaspora, in businesses, in offices, where you have seen the value of a Gayaza girl, please come to our rescue. It doesn't have to be something so huge, but one brick at a time, we shall make it. It's the teachers who made us who we are. It's their motivation, their teaching, their counseling, their guidance, their, their continuous support that has helped us become those great leaders that the world sees. I do not think the school deserves this staff room. I think it can be way better. 110 years, we definitely deserve a better staff room. My clarion call to them girls who have not logged on, the old girls who have not logged on, is to request them to get back and give back to Gaza High School. Uh, when I talk to these girls, I keep telling them that Gaza High School is my mother, our mother our mother figure, our mother surrogate. We've got to give back to our mother. And we'd like to call upon many more old girls in the different fields. There is quite a lot of work here to do. We have the computer section. We have the agriculture section. Now we are talking about building, but there are plumbing sections. There are so many sections that we need old girls to come back and support. Your support will not only be the material support, but there is the moral, there is the encouragement you are giving to the students. And I think when the students see the old girls working on the different projects, one, they would take that as the usual. That even when we become old girls, we should come back and give back to our school. But also, two, they will look up to them and say, I want to be like her. I want to be an architect. I've seen the product of the old girl, Gayaza. That is what I want to be. So it complements the education that goes on in school.